number three. So step number two, identify the separate performance obligations. Okay? So let's define first what is a performance obligation. So performance obligation is defined in Appendix A of IFRS number 15. Okay? So performance obligation according to Appendix A is a promise in a contract to provide a product or service to a customer. Meaning, ito lang naman, no? yung mga pinangako mo sa customer. Ito yung binibili sa'yo ng customer, whether product man yan or service. Okay? Now, a performance obligation, once again, a performance obligation, if this is distinct, let me repeat myself. If the performance obligation is distinct, see to it that we'll treat it as a separate performance obligation. Malanag. On the other hand, if the performance obligation is not distinct, meaning, nang not distinct ulit, we cannot sell it separately. Ibig sabihin, it is dependent on the other performance obligations in the contract. So if we cannot sell it separately because this is dependent or related to the other performance obligation in the contract, see to it that we should combine those performance obligations as discussed a while ago. Na discuss na natin kanina yung word na distinct. So right now, what we'll do is just to apply those concepts, okay? So let's now move on in this illustrative problem, okay? So here, Ivana Computers licenses customer relationship software to GMA company, right? In addition to providing the software itself, Ivana Computers promises to provide consulting services by extensively customizing the software to GMA's information technology environment for a total consideration of 2,880,000 pesos. In this case, Ivana Computers is providing a significant service no, by integrating the goods and services, that is the license and the consulting service, into one combined item for which GMA has contracted. In addition, the software is significantly customized by Ivana Computers in accordance no, with specifications negotiated by Ivana. So here the question is how many performance obligations should be accounted for under the contract. So sir, bakit nga mahalaga yan? This is important because apparently this step number two and the next step, which is step number three, will be the foundation of step number four. Ganag ba? So we should know kung ilan ng performance obligation natin so that we'll know right kung ilan or sa ilang performance obligation ba natin nahati right yung transaction price natin later on sa step number four. We're good. So here, situate at what? Situate na meron tayong dalawang performance obligation dito. First will be what? First will be the license. Second will be the consulting service. So the next thing that you have to know or you need to know is uh, whether these performance obligations are distinct or not. If these are distinct, we should account for them separately. But if these are not distinct, situate that we should only combine them as one. Okay? So now, here's my question. Can the seller or can Ivana sell the license without providing the consulting service? Actually, the answer is no. Sir, why no? Because if you will look at the uh, information provided in this problem, right, see to it that the, 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 the license, again, see to it that the license is actually customized no, by Ivana. Meaning, only Ivana, again, only Ivana can offer those consulting services. No other firm or no other company can offer the same consulting service. So if uh, if uh, if GMA will not buy, no, again, if GMA will not buy the license because Ivana refuses no, uh, to provide the consulting service, see to it now that Ivana or the seller cannot sell the license without selling the consulting service. So if we cannot sell one performance obligation without selling the others, See to it now that these performance obligations are actually related, meaning these are not this thing. So if these two performance obligations are not this thing, we should combine them as one. So if tatanungin tayo dito, ilang performance obligations bang meron tayo? Our answer is only one. Again, our final answer here will only be one. Okay? I hope that's clear, no? So to clarify it more, let's now move on to the next illustrative problem. So here, iCare Computers manufactures and sells computers that include a warranty 
to make good on any defect in its computers for 150 days. In addition, it sells separately you know, an extended warranty which provides protection from defects for three years beyond the 150 days. How many performance obligations are present here? All right. Well, here, kung bibilangin natin tatlo eh, ano yung tatlong yun? First will be the computer. Second is what we call the assurance warranty. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na assurance warranty. And we also have the extended warranty. Ngayon, kailangan natin malaman whether these performance obligations are actually distinct or not. Because if these are not distinct, we should combine them as part. Okay? So now, hear me up. Let's say bumili ka ng phone. So kapag bumili ka ng phone, pag binili mo tong phone na to, normally this comes with an assurance warranty. Tama ba? Bakit nagbibigay ng assurance warranty yung mga kumpanya? Para, right, mabigyan ng peace of mind yung mga buyer na hindi agad-agad yan masira or kung masira man yan agad-agad, they can return the same product to the seller. You me? So pwede ba, again, kaya bang mabenta ni seller ang isang produkto, let's say this iPhone, no, without giving away an assurance warranty? Pwedeng pwede ba yon? Of course not. Hindi ka makakapenda ng product, not unless you give away an assurance warranty. So the product now and the assurance warranty are not distinct. Because you cannot sell one without selling the other. So the computer and the assurance warranty now are treated as a single performance obligation. On the other hand, since uh, the seller, which is iCare, no, sells separately right, the extended warranty, see to it now that the extended warranty will be treated as another performance obligation. So to answer the question now here, that is how many performance obligations are present? Our final answer now will only be two. Yes, sir, tatlo yan. Yes, kahit tatlo sila, we combine the product and the assurance warranty right, in a single performance obligation because once again, these two are not this thing. Right? So here in this problem, our final answer will be two. Okay? So that's the end of step number two. Okay? Step number two is just easy because you just have to identify the separate performance obligations. Okay? Now let's move on to step number three. So dito na tayo medyo mag-iisip ng konti lang naman. Okay? So step number three once again is to determine the transaction price. Okay? So transaction price is actually discussed in paragraph number 47 of IFRS number 15. So according to paragraph 47 no, of IFRS number 15, transaction price is the amount of consideration to which an entity expects to be entitled no, in exchange for transferring promised goods or services to a customer. Meaning this is the amount we expect from the buyer as a result of these services or these products that we are offering to them. Ano nga nagba? So ito yung aasahan natin sa kanila. In short, transaction price is the other term for the selling price. Okay? So now, according to paragraph number 48, of IFRS number 15, when determining the transaction price, an entity shall consider the effects of all of the following. Okay? Number one will be the variable considerations. Number two will be the existence of a significant financing component. Number three will be the non-cash considerations. Then number four will be the consideration payable to a customer. Okay? So we'll start with variable considerations. What are variable considerations? Okay. So variable considerations occurs when part of the contract price depends on the outcome of a future event. Meaning, right, nakasalalay, no? nakasalalay sa outcome ng isang future event na ito, yung magiging transaction price natin. Let's say ganito. No? The transaction price is 100000 if, let's say, natapos mo yung project in two years. 120,000 if natapos mo one and a half year. If natapos mo ng one year, magiging 300,000 yan. So as you can see, paiba-iba yung transaction price depending on the outcome of a future event. So sir, paano yan? Malamadam mo rin po ba tayo dito na manguhula ng transaction price? Of course not. Because according to paragraph 15 no, of IFRS number 15, the entity shall estimate the amount of variable consideration. You should not wait for that future event to happen. 
Because apparently, you should recognize revenue now. Luwanag ba? And if you are required to recognize revenue now, sito it na kailangan mo ngayon i-estimate kung magkano ba yung ating magiging transaction price. And in estimating the transaction price, meron tayong dalawa. We have what we call no? the expected value approach and we also have what we call the most likely amount approach. This is in accordance with paragraph number 53 of IFRS number 15. Okay? Because that paragraph provides two me methods of estimating variable consideration. Okay? So according to paragraph 53, expected value approach no, is used or is appropriate if an entity has a large number of contracts with similar characteristics. Right? So if you have a large number of contracts with similar characteristics, expected value approach should be used. On the other hand, right, most likely amount approach is appropriate if the contract has only two possible outcomes. Meaning, if dalawa lang yung possible outcomes, si ito eh, na most likely amount daw yung dapat na ginagamit. But don't get it wrong. Kapag dalawa lang yung possible amount given sa problem, then sabi ng problem, expected value approach, you should follow what the problem is saying. Meaning, we should still use the expected value approach. Okay? Ngitin ko lang. First rule, gamitin mo kung ano yung method na pinapagamit sa'yo ng problem. Sir, sir, pag silent ang problem, anong method? If the problem is silent, right, and you only have two possible amount, most likely amount approach ang gagamitin mo. If, right, we have more than two possible amount, let's say we have three or more possible amount, always remember that expected value approach is the method or the approach that is appropriate. Maliwanag ba yun, guys? Are we good on that? Now, under the expected value approach, transaction price no, is actually equal to the sum. Again, listen very carefully. Transaction price is equal to the uh, sum of all the possible amounts multiplied to their corresponding probability. So just multiply these possible amounts no, to their corresponding probability and get the sum. And that's it. That's already the transaction price. While under the most likely amount approach, always remember that the transaction price is actually equal to the possible amount which has the highest chance of occurrence, right? So to illustrate, let's now move on to this illustrative problem, okay? So here, Ivana enters into a contract no, with Victory Christian Fellowship to install a music system together with its software. On January 1, 2028, Victory pays Ivana an upfront fixed fee of 50,000 pesos for six months of featured access. So fix yung 50,000 pesos na yan. No? On the other hand, anong sabi dito? Victory also will pay Ivana a bonus of 30,000 if, again, the word if here signifies that this is conditional. Alright? Ibig sabihin, hindi po certain na receive yung 30,000 na bonus. Alright? So Victory will also pay Ivana a bonus of 30,000 if Victory can use the music system anytime without experiencing technical difficulty during the six-month period. So, ibig sabihin ngayon dito, alright, meron tayong amount that is uh, conditional on the outcome of a future event, and that's the 30,000 bonus. Okay? So, ano pang sabi dito? Uh, ano pang sabi dito sa problem na to? Ivana estimates a 70% chance that it will achieve the usage target and receive the 30,000 bonus. So the requirement here is in letter A is how much is the expected value of the contract price at inception, so expected value approach. Then letter B, how much is the most likely amount of the contract price? So most likely amount approach. Okay? So under the expected value approach, once again, in order for you to determine how much will be the transaction price, all you have to do is to get the sum of all the possible amounts after multiplying the same to their corresponding probability. Okay? So here, we have two possible amounts. So possible amount, number one, and we also have possible amount, number two. So possible amount, number one, is equal to 50,000 no? plus the 30,000 bonus with the assumption na marireceive yung bonus or that's equal to 80,000 pesos. Possible amount number two is that we are not able no? Right, to provide or to satisfy the condition, therefore, we will not be receiving the bonus. So if that's the case, the amount that will be uh, that 
we can expect from the client will only be equal to 50,000. Okay? Once again, according to the client, there is a 70% chance that it will achieve the usage target. And so therefore, if there are only two possible outcomes here, the other outcome will have a chance of 30%. Okay? Ulitin ko lang for the last time. Under the expected value approach, transaction price is equal to the sum of all the possible amount after multiplying the same to their corresponding probability. So 80,000 times 70% is 56,000. And then 50,000 times 30% is actually equal to 15,000. So under the expected value approach, our transaction price now will be equal to 71,000 pesos. That's why requirement number one or letter A, 71,000 will be our final answer. Okay? Now, under the most likely amount approach, as I said a while ago, transaction price will be equal to the possible amount which has the greatest chance of occurrence. Yung may pinakamataas ng percentage. And what's that? Obviously, that's 70%. No? Ibig sabihin, under the most likely amount approach, our transaction price now will be equal to 80,000 pesos. Common mistake of students is that they multiply 70% right to the 80,000. Don't get it wrong. We are just using here the percentages to determine which among the possible amount has the greatest chance of occurrence. But at the end of the day, hindi mo yun yung multiply. Alright? So under the most likely amount approach, hanapin mo lang yung may pinakamataas na percentage and that's it. That's already our transaction price. Right? So requirement letter B, 80,000 will be our final answers. Now, punta tayo sa another illustrative problem para mas magets natin yung variable consideration. Okay? So here, Rain enters into a contract no, with a customer to build a 50-story building. 50 floors na building. Okay? For 100 million with a performance bonus of 50 million that will be paid based on the timing of completion. Once again, the performance bonus is based on the timing of completion. So there is another variable consideration because the transaction price or part of the transaction price is based on the outcome of a future event. Okay? So the amount of the performance bonus decreases no, by 10% per week for every week beyond the agreed upon completion date. So uh, for every week of delay, Every week na nalilate yung construction activities natin, nababawasan ng 10% yung ating transaction price, right? Or I mean yung ating performance bonus, okay? Ano pang sabi dito? The contract requirements are similar to contracts that RAIN has performed previously and management believes that there is a 60% probability that the contract will be completed by the agreed upon completion date, 30% chance that it will be completed one weekly and only a 10% probability no, that it will be completed two weeks late. Okay? So the requirements here are the same. First requirement is to determine the expected value of the contract price and the second requirement is to determine the most likely value of the contract price. Okay? So here we have three possible amounts. No? Expected value approach. Muna tayo. All right? So we have possible amount number one we also have possible amount number two then last we have possible amount number three okay so see to it that the 100 million here is fixed okay kasi yun talaga yung napag-usapan eh. so 100 million here by hook or by crook kailangan yan ma-receive the one that is conditional here is the performance bonus okay once again there is a performance bonus if we are able to complete the project on the agreed upon completion date. All right? So if natapos natin yung project no, on the agreed upon completion date, marireceive natin yung buong 50 million and so therefore, first possible amount is equal to 150 million. Okay? And apparently, there is a 60% daw. There is a 60% chance daw na matatapos natin yung project on the agreed upon completion date. Sabi ng problem na to. Also, there will be a 30% chance that it will be completed one weekly. So if na late tayo ng one week, see to it that the performance bonus will be decreased. Once again, according to the problem, for every week of delay, the performance bonus is decreased by 10%. So ibig sabihin, 90% na lang ito 
So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon, 45 million na lang yan. So, second possible amount will be equal to 145 million and by 30% chance na ganun daw yung mangyayari. Okay? Then, last but not the least, there is a 10% probability that it will be completed two weeks late. So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon, dalawang 10% na mawawala. So, if dalawang 10% nang nawala, 80% na lang ang ating marireceive. Okay? And then 50 million times 80% is just equal to 40 million. So third possible amount now will be equal to 140 million. And once again, the chance na ganun ang mangyayari is 10%. Okay? For the last time, under the expected value approach, transaction price is equal to the sum of all the possible amounts multiplied to their corresponding probability. So 150 million times 60%, that's equal to 90%. Million pesos, 145 million times 30 percent. That is equal to 43.5 million, and then 140 million times 10 percent is 14 million. So under the expected value approach, transaction price will now be equal to 90 million plus 43.5 million, 90 plus 43.5, and plus 14 million. Or this is equal to 147.5 million. So requirement letter A, 147.5 million is our final answer. Okay? Requirement letter B, most likely amount daw of the contract price. So under the most likely amount approach, expect that the transaction price is equal no, to the possible amount which has the greatest chance of occurrence now. Well, in this problem, that's the 60%. That's the possible amount number one. Okay? So under the most likely amount approach, situate the transaction price now is equal to 150 million. So requirement letter B, 150 million will now be our final answer. So that's the illustrative problem for that concept. Okay? Now, sabi nga natin kanina, there are four consideration or items that we should consider in determining the transaction price. First is the variable consideration. Second is the existence of significant financing component. Third will be what? Will be the non-cash consideration. Then last will be the consideration paid or payable to a customer. All right. So tapos na tayo sa variable consideration. So we'll now move on here in the existence of significant financing component. Okay. So according to paragraph number 16 no, of IFRS number 15, the entity should consider the time value of money. So sir, ano po ba ang ibig sabihin ng time value of money? Well, the concept of time value of money is that the value of money few years ago daw is not the same to the value of money today and to the value of money few years from now. So ang ibig sabihin ngayon dito, iba-iba daw yung presyuhan natin. Iba-iba daw yung power ng money mo. Let's say ganito, nung bata tayo, right? Nung bata tayo, ang candy natin, isn't it, nakakabili ng dalawa or tatlo? But right now, our one peso coin is only able to buy one candy. So expect that few years from now, your one peso coin will only able to buy maybe half a candy. Meaning you'll need, you'll need at least two pesos to buy one candy. Diba na ba? So based from that illustration now, Right? See to it that the value of your one peso coin a few years ago is not the same to the value of the same one peso coin today and to the value of your one peso coin a few years from now. And if that's the case, see to it that we should consider now right, that because apparently if right, the contract, no, again, if the contract includes a significant financing component because let's say inutang, no, again, inutang yung produkto natin, And then apparently, more than one year bago tayo mabayaran. So if more than one year bago mangyari yung bayaran, sito it na consider natin yung time value of money. Sir, paano kapag one year or less lang? If one year or less lang naman yung bayaran, no need, again, no need to consider the time value of money because the effect of discounting it is just immaterial. Alright? So nagdi-discount lang tayo, nagpipresent value lang tayo if the payment is more than one year. Right. So if the payment once again is more than one year, see to it the transaction price will be equal to the following in the order of priority. What do I mean by order of priority? Ang ibig lang naman sabihin niyan is that we will only right consider number two if in if and only if number one is not available. Parang ganito lang yano. 
kung dalawa sila sa buhay mo, apparently, kailan mo lang pinapansin yung number two? Pinapansin mo lang naman si number two kapag wala si number one, tama ba? Siyempre, kapag nandiyan sila pareho si number one, ang um, pinapansin natin. Kidding aside, same thing here. Right? We will only consider the second one if and only if the first one is not available in the problem. Okay? So the first one here is actually the cash price equivalent. Again, number one will be the cash price equivalent. Right? Sir, anong ibig sabihin ng cash price equivalent? Well, this is the cash or the amount of cash na babayaran sana ng buyer if nagbayad siya ng cash. Right? So sir, iba po ba yan sa installment price? Yes, this is different no? sa installment price. Sir, paano mo nasabi yun? Well, let's have an example. Let's say, let's consider my car. Right? Uh, I'm actually, I actually bought a car before the pandemic. No? Pandemic started last March 10, 2020, and then I bought a car because, right, syempre, anticipated na yun, nakakailanganin, alright? March 9, one day before, right? Syempre, inutang lang yun, wala tayong pambayad sa cash, hindi po tayo mayaman, no? We're not that rich, right? So, cash price equivalent of my car is nasa around 1.2 million, alright? So if mayroon sana akong 1.2 million, right? Yun lang yung halaga ng car ko. Apparently, wala akong ganung klasing pera. That's why inutang ko lang yung kotse na yun. And since apparently inutang ko lang yun, right? Kailangan ko ngayong magbayad monthly. And if I will uh, get the total payments, no total payments over the uh, over the next five years, kasi limang taon ko yun babayaran, the total will be 1.6 million. So, situate now that the cash price equivalent of that car is 1.2 million, then its installment price is actually equal to 1.6 million. So, the cash price equivalent now is not the same to the installment price. So, if inutang yung produkto natin, inutang yung services natin, situate that according to paragraph number 60, we should what? We should uh, account or we should uh, measure the transaction price based on the cash price equivalent regardless whether it is paid on cash or not. Maliwanag. So kahit na inutang yung produkto natin, cash price equivalent po yung ating magiging transaction price. Okay? Sir, what if the cash price equivalent is not available? If the cash price equivalent is not available in the problem, that's the time that we'll use number two. What is number two? Number two is the present value of future net cash inflows. Ibig sabihin, we'll get the future value of the note, right? Just in case we receive a promissory note. Okay? We all know how to compute present value naman na. Tama ba? Right? So to illustrate these concepts, let's now move on here in this illustrative problem. Okay? So here on September 1, 2028, Ivana Company sold goods to a Lawi company in exchange for a four-year non-interest bearing note with a face amount of 500,000 pesos. Okay? The goods have a cost on Ivana's book of 200,000 pesos. Okay? So number one, how much is the transaction price and the gross profit is the cash selling price of the goods is 300,000 pesos. So as you can see here, four years bago natin ma-receive. Okay? So here in requirement number one, situate the sales or revenue will be equal to the cash price equivalent and that's equal to 300,000. Because once again, first, here on our priority will be the cash price equivalent. And here in requirement number one, cash selling price is available and that's 300,000. Okay? So if the cost of the goods sold is 200,000, situate now that the gross profit, no? again, the gross profit now, will be equal to 100,000 pesos. So requirement number one, 300,000 and 100,000 respectively will be the final answer. Okay? Now, requirement number two tayo. Here in requirement number two, how much is the transaction price and gross profit if the cash selling price is not available? This time, present value is given. So sabi ng problem, present value factor of ordinary annuity of one, no? For four, right, is or present value, to lang, present value of an ordinary, present value of one lang dapat. The present value of one for four periods is 0.683. Dapat present value of one, not present value of ordinary. Okay? Based on an imputed rate, 
is actually equal to 10%. So apparently here, kailangan muna natin i-compute magkano yung sales natin. Because if the cash price equivalent is not available, our transaction price will be equal to the present value of the note. Okay? So here, the note is equal to 500,000. Base value of the note is 500,000. Present value of 1 given in the problem is 0.683. So sales now will be equal to 341,500. So if the cost of goods sold is just the same and that's equal to 200,000, expect that we have a gross profit now equal to 141,500. Okay? So requirement number 2, 341,500 and 141,500 now will be the final answer. And those are the concepts. If there is right, uh, a significant financing component existing in the contract. Okay? So that's the second consideration that we need to account in determining the transaction price. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa third consideration. The third consideration is the non-cash consideration. This time, right, we did not receive cash whether today or in the future, but instead, we actually receive a non-cash consideration, whether it is a property, plant, and equipment, whether it is a land, building, etc., etc. Okay? So according to paragraph number 66 of IFRS number 15, if we receive a non-cash consideration, always remember the transaction price is actually equal to the fair value of the non-cash, again, of the non-cash consideration received. Once again, according to paragraph 66 of IFRS number 15, if we receive a non-cash consideration, transaction price is equal to the fair value of the non-cash consideration received. And since madali lang naman to, I did not prepare any problem with regards to this. Hindi na ako nag-prepare ng problem with regards to that. Okay? So punta ngayon tayo sa last consideration. That's the consideration paid or payable to a customer. Alright? So here, according to paragraph number 71, consideration payable to customers for payment of distinct goods or services from customers shall be accounted in the same way that it accounts for other purchases from suppliers. Ibig sabihin, as if another supplier lang yan. Okay? So unless consideration payable to customer is higher than the fair value of goods or services or the fair value cannot be reasonably estimated. Okay? So, worded in another way, ganito lang naman ang sinasabi ni paragraph number 71. Okay? Let's say, tayo si seller and then meron tayong buyer. Okay? Then apparently, the same buyer is also our supplier. Ibig sabihin, if supplier natin yan, sometimes bumibili tayo sa kanya. Tama ba? And if bumibili tayo from that buyer, meron ngayon tayong what? Meron ngayon tayong tinatawag na consideration paid or payable or payable to a customer. To a customer because once again, alright, bumibili po tayo ng goods or services from that buyer. Because it happened no, na yung buyer na yun, supplier din pala. Okay? Ngayon, ganito. Para malaman mo if may problema ko dito or wala, kailangan mo i-compare ang dalawang bagay. Right? Ano yung dalawang bagay na i-compare natin? First thing na kailangan natin malaman dito is the consideration. Paid or payable to the customer. Saan natin yan i-compare? I-compare po natin yan sa fair value of the consideration. Right? Ano nga ulit sabi ni paragraph 71? Right? We will account or we should account for the transaction as if binili lang natin yung goods or service na yan from a normal supplier. Unless, once again, no, unless consideration payable is higher than the fair value. So if the consideration payable is higher than the fair value, dito tayo nagkakaproblema. Sir, bakit po? Because if the consideration payable is higher than the fair value, the difference is treated as what? The difference is accounted as a reduction, as a reduction of transaction price. Ibig sabihin, if yung amount na binayad mo sa customer or yung amount na ibabayad mo sa customer is mas mataas doon sa fair value ng goods or services na na-receive mo, the difference is accounted as a reduction of the transaction price. Get me? Eh sir, papaano po? If the fair value is higher or equal 
if the fair value is higher or equal, see to it that there will be no problem. Wala po tayong problema dito. Ano, anak, wala ka nang kailangan pang gawin. Okay? Then may kasunod pa yung paragraph 71. Or, meron tayo ditong or eh. Or, the fair value cannot be reasonably estimated. So see to it that if the fair value cannot be reasonably estimated, we'll assume that fair value will be equal to zero. Again, we'll assume that fair value will be equal to zero. So if that's the case, that the fair value will be equal to zero, the amount of consideration paid, again, the total amount of consideration paid or payable to the customer will be treated, no? again, which is treated as a reduction of transaction price. So ididedact natin ng buo yung consideration paid or payable. Ulitin ko lang. If may fair value, then yung fair value mas mababa, yung difference ng dalawa, reduction of transaction price. If fair value is mas mataas, walang problema. If walang fair value, the total amount of consideration paid or payable to the customer is reduction or treated as a reduction of the transaction price. Okay? So to illustrate, let's now move on to this illustrative problem. Okay? So here on February 14, 2028, I care company sold merchandise to PICPA for 60,000 pesos and received 60,000 pesos for that sale on March 14, 2028. Okay? Now, on March 7, that is one week before the sale. On March 7, 2028, iCare made a 10,000 payment to PICPA right, for advertising services that have a fair value of 7,500. Requirement here is, number one, how much revenue should iCare company record for the merchandise sold to PICPA? Once again, we are comparing the consideration paid right, and the fair value of the services right, or of the goods we receive from the same buyer or the same client. Okay? So dito, consideration paid according to the problem is 10,000 pesos. Okay? While the fair value is just equal to 7,500. So here, the consideration paid is higher. Anong sabi natin kanina? If the consideration paid or payable is higher, difference is treated as a reduction of transaction price. So ang ibig sabihin dito, the difference which is equal to 2,500 is treated as a reduction of transaction price. Okay? So if the transaction price here as given in the problem is equal to 60,000 pesos and ibabawas natin no? yung 2,500 the difference, see to it now that revenue or the transaction price that we should recognize will only be equal to how much? Will only be equal to 57,500. Okay? So 57,500, final answer for the first requirement. Okay? Then second requirement, how much revenue should I care company record for the merchandise sold to PICPA if the fair value of the advertising services cannot be reasonably estimated? If the fair value cannot be reasonably estimated, once again, we will assume that fair value is zero, meaning the whole amount of consideration paid or payable will be treated as a reduction of transaction price. Okay? So here in number two, right, the original transaction price is 60000 Since there is no fair value, see to it now that the consideration paid, which is equal to 10000 will be treated as a reduction in full. Okay? So the revenue or the transaction price that we should recognize now will be equal to 50,000 pesos. Okay? That's why requirement number two, 50,000 pesos will be the final answer. Right? So those are the four things that we need to consider in determining the transaction price. Ano nga ulit yung mga yon? Number one, variable consideration. Number two, existence of significant financing component. Number three, non-cash consideration. And then number four, consideration paid or payable to a customer. Alright? So that's step number three.